Hey everybody, this is Defense Mechanism. Just wanted to make a video about the new features and changes in LSDJ version 9.1.0. So the last video I did uh, was on version 8.8.5. Um, but just to recap, uh, in case you may have missed some of that, either that video or you're still using 8.5.1 stable, uh, we can talk about a couple of changes just really quickly. The first one is probably that um, the software envelopes for the pulse and noise channel, uh, they work great on hardware, but if you're going to use an emulator, uh, you'll have to use BGB, Same Boy, or Gambate. Um, those are the emulators that seem to support the software envelope. Uh, so I'm using BGB right now. Uh, I tend to like it because it's got um, wave export and it also separates the channels. It's really nice. Um, but if you're using something like Retroplug, uh, which is a VST wrapped Game Boy emulator based on Same Boy, um, it should also work uh, in, in that as well. So just wanted to uh, note that because it's really important if you're using a different uh, emulator like KIGB or VBAM or uh, something else, uh, it's probably not going to work the way that you expect. Um, anything that's version, I think it's in the version 8.7 or below should work okay in other emulators, but because this is like sort of a different uh, way of controlling volume, um, it's, it's not implemented in every emulator. Okay, so to move on quickly. Uh, there's also a new LSD patch application um, that I can link below, and it will automatically upgrade your ROM to the latest stable or the latest development. Um, right now, the latest development is 9.1.0. This isn't stable, um, but it's got a lot of nice features, and that's why I wanted to talk about it. Um, other cool things about the new LSD patch, um, you can... Uh, patch in samples and adjust the volume. Um, the sample quality in the LSD patch has really been improved, so it should mean that you don't have to do as much or possibly any pre-processing on samples. You can just kind of drag them in. Um, it's got little pads that you can click, kind of like MPC pads to play the samples. Um, it's also got a really cool palette editor, which I used to make this palette. and. Um, you can also edit these little glyphs above the channels. These aren't the defaults. I've just kind of drawn these in uh, for fun. So that's worth checking out, and I'll put a link to that below. So let's move on to some of the new features. Um, probably the most notable one. Oh, well, let's talk about some visual and cosmetic changes. These are pretty notable, too. So you can see these um, every four rows now, we have an alternate uh, shade. This is just a nice little visual indicator to kind of help your eye. Uh, subtle, but but nice. Um, and it persists on basically every screen too, so that's pretty cool. We also have uh, an updated screen map. So um, when you're above the chain phrase or instrument screens, going up goes to the synth screen by default. Uh, and then directly to the right of the synth screen is the wave screen. Um, so moving back and forth between these with select plus left and right feels pretty natural. Um, one kind of cool thing is that whichever screen you're on when you leave, so if I go back down to the instrument screen from the wave screen, now the wave screen will stay above uh, the phrase screen. So that way, if I want to go, you know, make something happen. Of course, I'm in the pulse channel right now, but if I was in the wave channel, I can go up and still edit a wave manually. And if I want to go back to the synth screen, it's still the way, it's still over here to the left. So it was getting a little confusing to go only right all the time to change between these two screens. So uh, it feels really natural and really good. I, I like it a lot. And then again, if you go back down from the synth screen, then the synth screen kind of stays where it is. Except if you go above table, uh, you'll always be above the wave, I believe. Uh, I don't think that changes. So um, so let's see. The next thing is 
the speaking of the wave screen, uh, this cursor where the the blinking um, sample indicator is is now uh, it blinks faster. So it's just kind of more eye catching. Uh, nothing really other than that subtle change, but a nice one. Uh, this next change um, is very noticeable uh, in tables, especially. So actually, let me take this note out of here. But if I play this phrase, um, I guess I probably need to run a table here. So let's do that. And you can see that these play indicators are now super fast. Uh, if I put like a hop command here, um, these update really quickly now. You may not be able to see it on this uh, video as well. Uh, it looks great on hardware. It looks really good in this emulator, but they update at 60 frames per second. And I, this might only capture 30 or something like that, but you, you might still get the effect. Um, it just looks really nice. It's very smooth. So that's a pretty cool change. And then probably the last uh, visual change. This is also a functional change, but uh, pressing B three times puts a bookmark across an entire row. So you can bookmark multiple rows, and then you can jump between the bookmarks by pressing B, uh, holding B and pressing up or down. Um, so one advantage of this is that these are now very visible. Obviously, a disadvantage is that you can't bookmark a single chain or a channel or two channels. Um, so that's kind of a bummer. but. Um, I think that this functionality is nice. The bookmarks are very visible, even on DMG when the screen shading isn't entirely great. Um, it kind of extends to the left of this cursor, so uh, it's it's very visible. So figured that was a notable change to talk about. So the next uh, biggest change that we have is the noise channel has been completely revamped and reorganized. So. Um, let's make a noise instrument and let's turn this volume down a little. Uh, and so you'll notice that we have notes here. Um, the noise channel has been reorganized such that there are notes. These notes correspond to the closest frequency that these uh, tones in the noise channel um, create. So that would be C. D, F, and G sharp. And they're numbered in the octaves that correspond to the other channels as well. Um, so pressing A and left, uh, holding A and pressing left and right will um, move you through these different values. So. Pressing uh, A plus up or down will navigate you by octave. And here we're getting into negative octave numbers. And once you get all the way down uh, to negative, I think it's nine, uh, then you reach into the digits, which are the, um, the non-tonal noise, the, the more white noise sounding shapes. So all of these are in order. They are in order from left to right, uh, lowest to highest. Um, and once you make it through these white noises, then it reaches into the notes, uh, and then it will wrap you all the way around. So um, that's a huge change. Um, if you have save files from previous LSDJ versions, these notes will automatically upgrade to the new shapes. The things that don't upgrade automatically are things like S commands or any kind of transposes that you have or any uh, S commands or transposes in uh, noise instrument tables. So um, I have created a noise converter uh, that I'll link to below. And it's also in the latest Intense Tech article, um, which you can check out about these changes and about the noise channel. Um, so if you really want to recapture as close as you can um, the kind of shapes and stuff that you had in older versions, um, you can do that. So 
next, the noise instrument no longer has free or stable. And we do have vibrato. I'll touch on that in a little bit. Um, but basically, there should be no reason why the noise channel mutes um, if you're using an emulator. Old Game Boys like DMGs and Game Boy Pockets and um, a lot of early versions of Game Boy Color have a hardware bug um, where the noise channel will randomly mute regardless of what mode it's in. Um, seems to be kind of a hardware bug. But later versions of Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance don't seem to have this bug and emulators like BGB and Same Boy also don't emulate a buggy noise channel. So if you're using an emulator or a Game Boy Advance, you shouldn't have a problem with random noise channel mutes um, in theory. So it may happen sometimes, I really don't know. Um, but if there's a possible workaround, it might be fixed in an upcoming version. If not, it might just depend on the hardware and uh, you know, Good old Game Boy hardware kind of is what it is, and that's what we're in store. That's what we have in store. And um, But if you want a flawless noise channel, you can always try a Game Boy Advance, uh, GBA SP, or use an emulator. Um, there are also, you know, third-party kind of devices like the BitBoy, um, the Analog Pocket, which is kind of expensive, but there are some options, you know, if you really need a perfect noise channel. So with that said, now one thing that we can do, which is very cool, is using the P command for pitch sweeps. Uh, these now happen smoothly. So uh, the P commands are also slightly different. Um, P01 used to apply S01 on every tick. Uh, now we have basically a speed control. So We uh, basically, I need to fix this probably. Let's just make this a constant tone here. So the higher you go in the P command, the faster the sweep goes. More effective in the ranges where you can actually hear a noise note like that and it will wrap all the way around so it will wrap into the tonal range uh, if this is allowed to extend and higher P values give some pretty crazy sounds And uh, at faster tempos, obviously, this stuff sounds even crazier. So uh, that's a pretty cool thing to note. Um, it makes doing stuff like uh, noise kicks with P commands possible now. Um, you can also have some uh, interesting kind of shapes on hi-hats just with a quick P sweep, um, even a snare drum. So it should allow for a lot easier... Uh, noise instrument shaping, which is, is really cool. Uh, the next thing is C commands used to function where they would add a value on every other tick. So if you had something like C10, it would toggle between this note and then the note at one zero uh, S command. So this is now changed to be like the C command in the other channels. So it's a little different uh, because each of these different notes is only one value away um, instead of being like three or four semitones. So something like C1, 2 will do like an F minor-ish arpeggio that's slightly detuned. And then higher values obviously will do even crazier things. 
So something like this. And then this can also be changed with command rate, so you could slow it down. Uh, so that, in my opinion, is, is pretty cool. Uh, let's see. So as I kind of mentioned earlier, V command now actually does noise vibrato, which is pretty cool, uh, in my humble opinion. So let's bump this up to maybe 05 and try a value like this. And then uh, higher values do some pretty crazy stuff too. And you can also combine these, I'm, I'm pretty sure, uh, to kind of get a vibrato that possibly sweeps. It's, it's not going to be the best sounding thing ever, but... Yeah, but that's still, <laughs> that's really cool. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, so this was an interesting thing to me because um, it used to be such that if you had a table on a noise instrument and you had some transposes that were happening over here uh, like this, uh, putting an S command over here was basically ignored. So every um, transpose value was always relative to the root. It wasn't relative to any other command. Uh, so a big difference now is that these transposes will apply on top of any kind of peak or V or C command or S command that's happening over here. So that is a bit of difference, um, but good to know. So I figure uh, that should be covered. So another thing about the vibrato is that the tick based vibrato, which the noise always is by default. And we have a couple of different shapes here, like we do in the other channels. Um, let's go out of the noise channel and back to the pulse channel. So when we have, um, this tick, nope, not drum tick pitch, this sets the vibrato to um, a slower rate. And each of these rates now uh, will basically happen rhythmically um, according to the default groove. So this like average six tick groove thing or you know something that's based on an average of six ticks. So um, any of these kind of settings will... Uh, Let's see. These are, uh, um, you can, it's possible to get rhythmic stuff happening, which is especially cool because uh, it should make really, for really interesting noise, vibrato, rhythmic um, ideas. So yeah, uh, there are some values that are written in the change log, um, but the idea is basically that if you're at the default groove, tick vase vibrato might have something cool in store. Another change is um, if you have something like this where you have a V command and then V00, V will turn off uh, the previous vibrato. Uh, however, if you apply the value of V00 to a note and there's no vibrato happening, uh, this vibrato will uh, trigger vibrato at the lowest depth. Which is kind of a nice, like very subtle vibrato. Um, sometimes V01 might be too much. And so this is a pretty natural, but subtle vibrato. Um, in previous versions, uh, V00 would just turn off vibrato and this depth was not available. In even more previous versions, this would never turn off vibrato and it would only apply a, vibra a subtle vibrato. Um, so this is kind of merging both of those into hopefully the best of both worlds. So the next change is 
uh, it's possible now to overdrive the limit parameter in the wave synth. So let's um, go to our synth, which is over here. And limit, as you can see, is now expanded to two digits. So um, 0, 0 through 0F are the previous values. Um, but it's now possible to go above 0F. So let's say I have something like this, volume 20. With everything limited at F, uh, while I'm clipping, I can't go above, like nothing happens. Everything gets clipped at either 0 or F. If I go above 0F and like, let's say to 17 or something like that, now it's possible to actually wrap. Even though I have this set to clip, I can overdrive the limit and make it wrap, uh, which is pretty cool. And you also see see these little uh, jaggedy kind of extra harmonic things that are happening here. It's not just one line um, like this. Uh, let's if I can highlight these, maybe it'll be clearer. These values, you actually get some alternating things happening here. This is like, um, oopsies, zero one zero one. Zero and these kind of add extra fuzz and extra harmonics. So I think this is really cool. Um, it used to be possible to sort of wrap around by accident in like version four, um, but now we actually have control over how much we want to wrap around. So you can like go crazy to your heart's content and wrap like really crazy stuff. Um, and we can see how this sounds. It's going to be pretty wild. Let me set this to once so even though we're set to clip we can still wrap uh, as much as we want so that's a really cool change uh, the next one that you might have seen while I was editing this is that manual will choose the wave instead of the synth so between all of these I can now uh, choose kind of like <laughs> instead of choosing a whole synth and then having to use F commands uh, over here, you can now set it per instrument to have a default wave. So that's uh, really nice and handy if you want to have that more, you know, finer control. And speaking of F commands, uh, F commands happen instantly in phrases now. So it used to be the case that if you had, you know, three F commands over here, that you wanted something to happen um, on these notes. Um, at really low notes, these F commands would be delayed because um, the silky wave feature uh, will wait for the end of the waveform before it actually changes. Uh, and that means that if it's waiting for that, then it, it gets delayed and it makes these rhythmic sorts of changes or even something like this, um, a lot kind of less rhythmic. It sounds a little jaggedy, but not anymore. Um, these actually uh, now function like they did in version four. So these happen instantaneously. Uh, the rhythms are pretty tight. They happen you know, exactly when you want them to. Um, it does add a slight click in here, but that can also emphasize rhythm. So. Um, I really think this is probably the way that F commands should function. If you have the uh, playback set to once or loop or ping pong, the silky wave is still applied while this is playing back, and that eliminates the clicking. Um, if you want to get around that, you can use R commands, um, but the basic idea is that the F commands will happen instantly, and I think that's... Uh, makes for a little bit cleaner sound, even though it's noisy. Um, it, it's just, I think, better musically. So uh, the next change, this is for table volume hops. And I'm not sure if I have covered this in a previous video. But the idea is this volume column, which can set uh, different volumes. So the first, I think there's a help command. Oh, there's 
thought there was help. Maybe there should be. But this volume column, the first digit is the volume, and the second digit is how long it lasts. So if you have something like this, we have volume one for one tick, volume two for one tick, et cetera, et cetera, going up, going up, going up. And let's say I want to loop it uh, back to volume one again. I can actually uh, change this such that the first digit is the row that I want to hop to. And then when I go to past E here, we have O. Um, this will loop back to row zero. It used to be that this would actually take one tick to occur, and you would have to account for that uh, in this scheme here. But these now happen instantly, so. So um, these now are instantaneous, and these number of ticks, if you add up all of these ticks, then they happen uh, when you would expect them to. So that's pretty nice. Uh, the next change. So this one is for uh, kit instruments. If I'll just go over here and make a kit instrument. You can now, this is especially nice if you have the same kit in both columns. So, you know, if I want this bass drum here, I can press uh, select plus B and then B, and then press select plus A, and now I can paste that over here. This didn't used to be possible, but now it is. So uh, this is pretty handy if you want to be able to paste things. If for some reason, this is... Sounds great. <laughs> uh, that's a, just a nice uh, quality of life feature to have. Uh, yes, another change. This fine tune setting in wave and pulse instruments has been increased to two digits. So this is kind of the opposite of the way that limit works. Fine tune one zero uh, is like the old fine tune one. So, um, and two zero is like two. So you have this entire range now between uh, the, the digits where you can apply uh, just extra precise fine tune, um, which is really nice. Uh, the next change is remastered default drum kits. So um, each one of the kits has been basically re, yeah, remastered. Um, there are a couple of small changes. Uh, they're just smoother. Um, they're louder. They sound pretty good. Um, the 727 kit has had some of its samples reordered. So if you use this and you're upgrading a song, you'll have to go through and, and just change these to the correct samples. But uh, other than that, I think they're basically the same. Um, so that's really nice, actually. I think that, um, that they, they sound really good. So. Uh, yeah, go go check that out. Um, one thing I should say is if you upgrade the ROM using the ROM patcher, it will actually keep in the old kits uh, because it's only upgrading the ROM. So if you actually want the new remastered kits, you'll have to download the ROM and then patch in any uh, kits that you've made previously. So, But if you want to keep the old kits, then you could do that too. It's really up to you. Um, this change there's just a small change to the, the help screen uh, in case you have ever looked at this uh, just these texts have been slightly upgraded um, that's about it there's nothing really uh, I just mostly put this in here <laughs> to remind people that there is a help screen if you forget what you're doing um, there are some just it's just a quick reference which is a really nice thing and that's it I uh, hope you like 9.1.0. If you try it, let me know what you think. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, hopefully uh, you like it. I think it's really good. I think there are a lot of improvements. Um, I don't know if I'm going to upgrade all my songs <laughs> because upgrading the noise channel uh, might take me a little while. 
Um, and, uh, and all my songs work in 901, which is also a very good version. Uh, but if you're excited about this noise channel, uh, like I am, I think there are some really cool possibilities um, that are about to be unlocked. Um, we could be kind of entering a new era here. I know that's speaking pretty highly, but that's really how I feel about it. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.